Hi, I would like to welcome you to MOTC uh, Training Center. My name is Ali Brown. I will be your pastor and instructor for the next hour as we study discipling. Let's go before the Father in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you glory and give you praise and thanksgiving. For this is the day you are made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the word going forth in power and might. Thank you, Father, that we not only be a hearer of the word, we will be a doer of the word we hear. And we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's the lesson is going to be on discipleship, on discipling. And we're going to identify a lot of things about how, when, what, and where, and how it operates. So uh, what is a disciple? A uh, discipleship is a Christian disciple and a, te uh, a teacher-student relationship based on the model of Jesus and his disciples, in which a teacher re reproduces the fullness of his li of life he has in Christ in the students so, so well that the student is able to train others to teach others to teach others to teach. And so it's a, pr a, pr a progress. And another definition, we can, it's just in, uh, um, expounding on what we just said. A disciple is one who grows in Christ and in doing so models and teaches Christians the precepts of the Bible, prayer, doctrine, relationship, Christian living, service, and, and worship, to name the main ones. And so it's, uh, uh, it's a lot to a uh, disciple and discipling. And we're going to go through and, and, and point out a lot of, a lot to be learned. So the cost of discipleship. Uh, Preach out of uh, Luke 14, 25 to 35. Salvation costs you nothing, but discipleship will cost you everything. Salvation occurs in a moment, but discipling takes a lifetime. Jesus asks whether or not you, are, you truly want to live a life of discipleship. If you are a disciple, do not quit. Do not give up. Every, everything that matters is hard. Everything that matters is costly. Do not quit. Don't waste your life. Make your, make your life and death count. Do not raise your hand unless you are ready to see it through to the end. Do not, do not go in. You're going to go in and make your mind. You're going all the way. And your disciple is a self-death. Christ call to discipleship is a call to self-death and absolute surrender to God. God wants to surrender to Him. In order to surrender to Him, you have to have a relationship with Him. He wants us to get into this and, and, and really just surrender all to Him. And count the cost when you surrender all. We're going to go to Luke 9, uh, verse 23. And He said to, uh, said to all, this is Jesus talking, If anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoso Whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever will lose his life may sa for my sake, he shall save it. So the cost of discipleship is surrender all, follow Jesus, and do as he tells us to do. And so when people say, I don't want to give up everything. It's, 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 it's a mind and a heart matter. The cost of discipleship, Matthew, Mark 8, 38, 34. And calling near to the crowd with his disciples, he said to them, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. Jesus said it in the Gospels. He said the same thing over and over again. And, for, uh, and whoever say, uh, she will save his life shall lose it. But whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the Gospel, he shall save it. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus called people to become his disciples. Jesus is Lord of lords and king of kings, and the lord of the universe commands every person to follow him. He called to Peter and Andrew and to John and James. It was a command, follow me. Has always been a command, never an invitation. It was never an invitation, it's a command, follow me. And in and, uh, and Mark um, 1, 16, and walking along the, by, uh, uh, beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and, and Andrew, his, his brothers, brother, casting a net into the sea, and they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishermen of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. They just, just left whatever they left their nets, they left their boats, they left whatever they were doing, and followed Jesus. And also James and John in Mark 1, 19 and verse 20. Uh, and when he was going 
uh, uh, going for, uh, f uh, far, uh, further from there a little, he saw James, the son of uh, Zippy, and, and John his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zippy, in the boat, and, 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 and with the hired servant and went after him. So he left everything. He had hired servants, so, serv servant, so these people had uh, uh, money. They had money, John and James, because he had uh, servants. He left them, he left their boat, he left everything. And he, and he went after him, went after Jesus. Jesus never pleaded for someone to follow him. He never begged, pleaded. He was straightforward. He confronted the woman at the well with her adultery. Uh, Nicodemus with his intellectual pride and the Pharisees with their self-righteousness. Um, Matthew 4:17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus commanded each person to renounce self-seeking self pursuits, abandon his sin, and obey him completely. When the rich uh, young ruler refused to sell all that all and follow him in Matthew 19, uh, uh, verse 21, Jesus did not run after him and, and, and trying to negotiate uh, or compromise. He never watered down his standards. Jesus, 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 he said, follow me. I mean, it wasn't no shortcut. It wasn't no, he didn't put no icing on the cake. It, it was straightforward with it. Jesus simply said, whoever served me must follow me. Uh, John 12:26. Jesus expected immediate, immediate obedience. He accepted no excuse. And we can look at that in Luke 9:62. Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In Luke 9:57 through 63, three people seeing willing, willing to follow Jesus. When Jesus questioned them further, their commitment was half-hearted at best. They failed to count the cost of following him. None was willing to take up his cross and crucify, and crucify upon it his own interests. They didn't want to give up anything. A lot of people today do not want to give up anything. They want to follow Jesus. They want to half step. They want to halt between two opinions. They don't want to be in this world half the way and uh, in the kingdom of God. But see, if you were in the world and doing the way the world is doing it, you're not, uh, you're not uh, all the way in the kingdom. You're just doing the world. You know, he uh, you when you're hot, hot or cold, not lukewarm. And so when it... Um, uh, uh, when a man first wanted to bury his father before following Christ, he told him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Luke 9, 6, 60, Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead, but, go, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. No man was uh, praised for obeying God, Christ's co uh, commands to follow him and be his disciple. It was expected. Jesus said, so you too, and Luke 17:10, it is the same with you. When you have done all you have been told to do, you say, do say we are ordinary servants, are ordinary children of God, ordinary Christians. We have only done our duty of what we was told. So we don't have to get no accolades. No, I mean, we don't have to get no, a, I have an amen corner or uh, I have a praise session for look at me, look at me. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. So when we do what, what uh, uh, I'm doing it for the, uh, for the love of Christ, not for accolades and not for men, um, uh, men's approval. That's what I uh, Disciples don't do that. When you do become a disciple of Christ. So when do you become a, a disciple of Christ? That's the question. So we're going to answer the question. When you read the Bible, is that that's when you become a disciple? No. When you keep kneel at the altar? Mm-mm. When you, when you weep seriously? Uh-uh. Christ's original followers became disciples when they obeyed him, when they immediately left the boat and their fathers and followed him. Matthew 20, uh, 4, 22. O great obeying Christ's commands, follow me, result in self-death. It's all a self-death. One must deny himself. Design himself means that we reject our natural feelings about ourselves, our rights to ourselves, our right to rule, run our own lives. We are to deny that we own ourselves. We do not have the final right to decide what we are going to do or where we're going to go. We give it up that right. When y'all are reading and studying this, I'm going, 
Okay. Now it's easy said when you just, God tell you to go somewhere where you live already and he say, I just want you to go over to uh, maybe the next county. I want you to take a, uh, 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 make your home over there. But God told you to say, I, like, I want you to go to Africa tomorrow and leave everything you have and follow me. How many of you, and I'm pointing this way, would just jump up and get a ticket to the place God told you and pack what he said pack and follow him? See, I know of several people that, that, that's, that's living in the different parts of the country did exactly that. They packed up their clothes and, and went on and followed Christ. To deny a, a, a sinful self ungodliness and, and worldly lust and par, and par with them and, and, and form a sin uh, companion which were a part of yourself. So it means, it means deny sinful self, ungodliness and worldly lust and par with them. And, you know, lay them aside. Leave them, let them go. Lay aside every sin so easily weigh you down or so easily trap you. Lay aside. And it's form a sinful companion. In other words, you, you, they always told me years ago, you say, if you're running with dogs, you're going to have fleas. Some, some kind of uh, companions we have to let go. We no longer uh, uh, supposed to hang with them, which were a, a part of our, uh, himself. To not, to not deny righteously, righteous self. Some people are righteous uh, and, re, and renounce all his own works of righteousness in the business of justification and, 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 and salvation. Uh, we renounce our own righteousness because it's not God's righteousness. To deny self with his self-righteousness, pride and sinful lust from uh, dominating you. We gotta uh, 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 not let that be a part of us. Following Jesus is easy when life runs real smooth. No bumps. Everything is going our way. I mean, you have, you're a happy camper. I mean, everything is sweet. You don't have to worry. <laughs> Nothing is going on. It's easy to follow him. Our true commitment to him is revealed during trials. How far will you go? Jesus assured us that trials will come to his followers. In John 16, uh, 16, he said, in this world you're going to have some trial, tribu and tr trials and tribulations, but you might have peace. I've told you these things. So in me, you might have peace. The disciples demand sacrifice, and Jesus never hid the cost. He's count the cost. Therefore, Jesus appeared to, uh, to persuade them. How different, uh, uh, how different from the typical Christian uh, presentation. How many people would report, respond to the altar call that went, Come follow Jesus. You might face the loss of friends. <laughs> you might face the loss of family, reputation, career, and possible, possible even your own life. The number of false converts would, uh, would likely decrease. Such a call is what Jesus meant when he said, Take up your cross and follow me. It's cost something. It costs something. If you one of you are ready to take up your cross, consider these questions. Now, there's no more questions. I want you to answer. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing some of your closest friends? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means uh, uh, alienation from your family? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means you losing your reputation? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your job? Or not having a job? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your life? In some places of the world, these consequences are, are a reality. But notice the question and phrase, are you willing? He said, if you're willing, I'll make you able. If you're willing, you eat the fat of the land. He said, I want you to be willing. He said, those, those who love me are willing to do what I tell them to do. Follow, uh, following Jesus doesn't necessarily mean all these things will happen to you. Praise Jesus. But you are willing to take up your cross. And if you, if there comes a point in your life when you are faced with a choice, Jesus or the comfort of this life, which one will you choose? Uh, okay, we're going to turn to, uh, Paul, Paul was telling the Corinthians, he says, uh, um, you are not your own, you are bought with a price. This is 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Be in, in 28. If you're going to follow Jesus, you'll no longer own yourself. 
He has ultimate rights. He has lordship of your life. He is your Lord. Not only your God, but your Lord. So I, I, our whole thing is this. When we, we count the cost, when you say give up all, let everything go and follow me. Give up. And if I tell you what to do, just like Mary said, he told the disciples, if Jesus told you, if he told you to do, just do what he tells you to do. If, don't worry about it, just do what he says. If Jesus said to do it. Denying, your, denying sinful self is uh, explained by Peter. A stay from fle a fleshy lust. So let's turn to 1 Peter 2, 11 through 12. How does, how can we manifest? How can we manifest giving it all? How can we manifest uh, 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 letting go? How can we manifest? Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires, lust, the wars, the war, uh, the rage war against your very soul. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even, it, then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judged the world, when he judges the world. See, we want to live abstaining from fleshy lust and live a, a, whole, a holy life because we're set apart. We've been, we're a holy nation. We've been set apart. We've been set apart for God. We've been sanctified. And God wants us to uh, let our witness be known to the people, unbelievers. That's how, uh, how they're going to see that we are different. And they, 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 they may not appreciate you at first when they see you're different, especially the people who have been knowing you all your life. But they will appreciate you when they know that you're real and you, you're not a counterfeit. You, you, you're not perpetrating. You, you're, re, you're real. So when, when trouble comes in this life, in the world, and they, and they, they, see, the, they see the light, and they see the change, They'll come to you, and then you can, be a, you can witness to them. You, you're going to be a witness to them whether you open your mouth or not. As a disciple and a disciple and others, you're going to be a witness about your behavior and about what comes out your mouth, good or bad. And so he says, uh, even if they, they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, and they will give honor to God when he judged the world. And 1 Peter 4, 1 says, Since Christ suffered physically, you too must straighten, strengthen yourself with the same ways of thinking that he had. Because, where, because whatever suffering suffers physically, no, I'll go back, because whoever suffers physically is no longer involved with sin. From now on, you must live the rest of your earthly life controlled by God's will and not by human desires. You have spent enough time in the past doing what the heathen like to do. Your life was spent in indecency, uh, in lust, drunkenness, orgies, drunken, drinking, uh, drunken parties, and the disgusting worship of idols. And now that heathens are surprised when you do not join them in the same wild and reckless life, so they will insult you. See, now you can turn your life around, and, 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 and they, they are surprised. Because we didn't, we say, in other words, enough is enough. We have already been there, done that, and moved on. I don't have to go back. I don't, I don't even have to rehearse the past unless I'm giving a testimony about how God got the glory and brought me out of it. Now, because there's nothing back there I can do anything about. But I tell you what, it's a good day. It was a good day. It's a good day when I, I joined, the, I came into the body of Christ. It's a good day for you and uh, the, the disciple others to come into the kingdom of God and give them the truth of God's word and live before them in a holy, in a, uh, uh, as, as a holy manner. The nine righteous, righteous self is explained by Paul who has much about which he could have boasted. See, Paul had a lot to boast about, but he didn't, he didn't do it, he didn't have no self-righteous pride. So we got to deny that right, you know, pride becoming before destruction. Paul went through, he had a whole lot of things he could have boasted about. So let's turn to Philippians 3, 4 uh, through 6. This is Paul talking. Though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, indeed if others have reason for confidence in their own effort, I, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded 
uh, citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew. If there was ever one, I, I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I, that I hastily persecuted the church. And boy, did he persecute the church. And as for the righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. This is him saying. So he said, I got a reason to boast. But I don't, I have a reason to brag. I, have, I mean, I'm, I'm a man's man. I'm a, you know, I'm all that. And, and maybe they say I'm all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> but he said, let me listen to what he says in Philippians 3, 7 through 14. The very credential that these people are waving around as, special, as something special, I t I'm tearing up and throwing it out with the tr uh, trash. And along with everything else I used to take for credit for. And why? Because of Christ. Yes, all the things I once thought were so important and gone are gone for my life compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master. First hand, everything I once thought I had going on for me is insignificant. Dogs done. I dumped it all in the trash so I could embrace Christ and be embraced by him. I didn't want some petty inferior brand of righteousness that come from keeping a list of rules which I could get, uh, could get, the, uh, could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. I gave up all that inferior stuff so I could know of Christ personally, experience his resurrection power, to be a partner in his suffering, and to go all the way with him to death itself. If there was any way to get in, in on the resurrection from dead, I wanted to. I mean, he said, I, he said, I'm sold out. All the other stuff I could brag about, I had it going on. And you out there as, as ministers of the New Testament, we could brag and boast by uh, accolades. I remember, uh, I remember I had a wall full of accolades on the wall. And one day, I looked at that wall and I said, let me get this off this wall. I don't need this on my wall. I don't need, I don't need, a, I don't need to show, I don't need to prove anything anymore. I don't need, I don't need it. Let it go. And Paul said, I got, I mean, to get to know Christ, to get to know him personally, to get to know him in first hand. Everything I once thought I had going on, is, it, 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 it does not compare to Christ. It does not compare to knowing him and knowing about him. So he says, uh, I give it all up. I give it, let it go. Just to know him. And this is where we're growing into that place. We're growing in that place as disciples. And when we disciple other people, see, we're going to reproduce other people just like us. We're going to pour our, ourselves into them. But we want to make sure when we pour into them, we're not pouring anything into them as counterfeit. We want the original. We want to make sure we're transparent. So, we, I mean, there's no hidden agendas. And they look at us and see, clearly see that we, we walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And, and clearly see that we're, we're are, 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 are reaching toward the goal. And how, uh, uh, I'm going to continue uh, 12, 14. Focus on the goal. I'm not saying I have this all together. That I have made it. But I'm well on my way. Reaching out for Christ, who has so uh, wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I call myself an expert in all of this, but I got my eyes on the goal. For God is reckoning us toward, to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not going to turn back. I'm going to forward. Say, I might not have arrived, but I've taken off. And so God's telling us that you may not, you, know, you haven't arrived. Just take off. Don't stand still, because standing still is going back. Purpose yourself to go forth. And I was reading this, and I was like, you go, Paul, go. I mean, you just go. I mean, it just it excited my heart so, because I could see that he, was, he had crossed the other side. His whole mind and heart was to serve God, with his whole heart was his purpose to serve him. Serve him with his mind, will, and emotion. Serve him with his strength. Serve him with his intellect. Serve him with his wisdom. Serve him with passion. I mean, so when you serve, when you get sold out, when you get sold out to God, don't nothing but, this stuff don't phase you like it used to phase you. It don't trip you out like it used to trip you out. Because you know God is, God is for you and whatever you're going through, God is, God is, God is going to work it out for your good and you want to make, make sure that when you go and teach others to teach others to teach, you want to teach him the truth, the true living word of God. Not some counterfeit, not some religion, not none of that. The real deal. One must take up his cross. Therefore, taking up your cross and following me means being willing to die in order to follow Jesus. 
This, uh, this call is dying to self. It's a calling to absolutely surrender. Taking up your cross refers to living your whole life to God. As Jesus was about to give up his life for us, this is just like Jesus was about to give his, his life for us. He lived his life for God. This involved bearing, bearing burdens, but it, it is deeper than that. It is a total dedication of life. A whole life is given to the, his service. And anything he says, this it will lead us to willingly deny ourselves, follow him, and, and it requires us to live as he lived. And so we got to figure out how did he live. First Peter 2.21 for, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example so you might follow his footsteps so he said he suffered for you he says leaving you an example so that you might follow his footsteps 1 Corinthians 11.1 1, be imitated as I am of Christ imitate him as dear children imitate him he, he, he didn't think of no robbery. He, he didn't, he only, he said, I only does do what my father says. Me and my father's one. Whatever my father say, I'll do. Luke 9, 23, and he said to all, if anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. How is manifest in the case of the apostle, it says, um, what they endured. See, you don't have to endure it. I'm willing to, I'm willing to do endure. I'm willing to do whatever I'm told to do. But I need the help of the Holy Spirit. See, Holy Spirit is going to help us to do what we need to do. He's going to strengthen us daily. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because he gave it to us every day. Every day is a good day. Every day his grace is sufficient. Every day he gives us mercy. 1 Corinthians 4 and 9 said, as I see it, God has placed us apostles last in line like people condemned to die. We have become a spectacle for people and angels to look at. We have given up our wisdom of Christ, but you have insight because of Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. We are honored, but we, uh, uh, you are honored, but we are dishonored. To this moment, we are hungry, thirsty, poorly dressed, roughly treated, and homeless. We were ourselves out of our doing physical labor. When people verbally abused us, we blessed them. When people persecuted us, we endured it. And I'm going, whoa, this is a disciple. And then we go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 4.13. When our repetition were, uh, 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 repetitions are uh, uh, tacted, we remain courteous. Right now, we have become garbage in the eyes of the world and trash in the sight of all people. But it doesn't matter. When Paul uh, in particular endured, and we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29. And they... And see, we, we count, we think we're going through a lot of time, we think we're going through something. But when you start reading, I read, start reading the account of, of the, uh, the disciples and the apostles, and I'm going, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Thank you for where I live. Thank you for the state I'm in. Thank you for the country I'm in. Thank you, Lord. For <laughs> you begin to praise him because these people went through some, they went through. Uh, as they, um, are they Christ's servants? It's insane to say it, but I'm, I am a far better one. I've done much more work, been in prison many more times, been beaten more severely, and have faced death more often. Five times the Jewish leaders have beat me with 39 lashes. This is Paul. Three times Roman officials have beat me with clubs. Once people tried to stone me to death. Three times I was shipwrecked. And I drifted out on sea for a, a night and a day. Because I traveled in light, I faced danger from raging rivers, from robbers, from my own people, and from other people. I faced dangers in the city, in the open country, on the sea, and, and, and from believers who turned out to be false friends. Because I had to work so hard, I often gone without sleep, been hungry and thirsty, and gone without food and without proper clothing during cold weather. Because, because besides these extreme matters, I have the daily pressures of my own anxiety, 
and anxieties about the, all, uh, all the churches. When anyone is weak, I'm weak too. When anyone is caught in a trap, I'm also harmed. If I must brag, I will brag about the things that show how weak I am. Woo! Goodness. I mean, just thinking about what he endured, but he, he endured it with an attitude. It was worth it. Only for, only thing done for Christ would last. Is in our case it might involve being ridiculed. First Peter four four. Now your former friends wonder why you have stopped running around with them, and they uh, cur uh, they curse you for it. You know what? People will turn on you when you when you when you when you're a disciple and you start discipling other people. They will turn on you. They will uh, they will lie on you and they will persecute you and ridicule you. And, and uh, I remember one time I was going out to uh, uh, minister and. Uh, they were asking me how much money I made, uh, some of the people I work with, how much money I made for going out to the prisons. And I said, oh, I would gladly pay to go. And they laughed. I thought they were going to fall to the floor and start kicking and screaming. They laughed at me. You, you don't mean you don't get paid? I said, I get paid oh, not the way you think I get paid. But no, I, I will pay to go. And I meant it, I will pay to go. Because we have a good time going. Just let me know how much it costs <laughs> to go and minister. Um, and, they, and then the people that uh, they think it's foolishness. Now your former friend, uh, okay, you could, you're going to get re a reviled, uh, uh, spoken evil of. Um, and also Matthew 5, 11. Blessed are, the, uh, are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all kinds of evil against you, falsely for my sake. He, we blessed. He said, blessed are those. In Luke 6.22, blessed are you when people hate you, avoid you, insult you, and slander you because you are committed to the Son of Man. In 1 Peter 4.14, happy are you if you are insulted because you are Christ's followers. This means that the glorious spirit of uh, glorious spirit, the spirit of God is resting upon you. So if people come against you, so <laughs> so what? They came against Jesus. You're in real good company. So to count the cost. All the people all the while rejoicing that one is honored to suffer for Christ. No one likes to hear that word suffer. No one want to know, we all, all want to, everything will be all right all the time. That word suffer. But we're going to suffer because he said so. We're going to go through some stuff because he said so. First Peter, for the gospel's sake. First Peter 4, 16. If you suffer for being a Christian, don't feel ashamed. Praise God for being called that name. Praise him. Because Christ suffered and we're going to suffer but we're going to go through things, but we're going to go through with the attitude that the rest is in the Lord. Our rest is in the Lord. Not what the world can do or don't do. Our rest is in the Lord. Acts 540 uh, through 542. The council took his advice. They called the, uh, the, the uh, apostles, beat them, ordered them not to speak about the one named Jesus, and let them go. The apostle left the council room and they were too happy. They were happy to have been considered worthy to suffer this honor for speaking about Jesus. Every day in the temple, temple uh, 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 courtyard, and from house to house, they refused to stop teaching and telling the good news that the Jesus is the Messiah. Whether they was beating him or not, they weren't going to stop. They weren't going to stop their testimony. They weren't going to stop doing what the Word of God told them, they, what Jesus told them to do. They were willing. Uh, uh, to deny, de de uh, deny self and bear one's own cross on a daily basis. Are you willing, am I willing to walk worthy? Am I willing to take up the cross and follow him on a daily basis? Not consider uh, oh, them doing me wrong. If they bless those who persecute you and come against you and despitefully use you, bless them. Bless them. One must follow Jesus. What it means to become his disciples, seeking to become like him. Luke 6, 40, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Romans 8, 29, 
for whom he foreknew he also predestinated to be conformed to this image of his son for him to be the firstborn uh, born among many brethren in Romans 14 13 14 put on the uh, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify his desires to accept him as Lord doing what he says and Jesus already told us in Luke 6 46 that why do you call me Lord and do not do what I tell you to do why do you call me Lord he said so as a, as a disciple and when you're discipling others you want to you want to be transparent you want to be you want to uh, uh, tell them the truth you want to get the word of God and live this life see we're supposed to live it it's not a it's not a Sunday meeting it's not a, a, a every six month meeting it's a daily pick up your cross daily and follow him to walk in his footsteps even as a even as great cause at a great cross first Peter 2 21 through 25 let's turn first Peter uh, uh, 2 21 through 25 it was to his to this that God called you for Christ himself suffered for you so and left you as an example so you would follow his footstep he committed no sin and no one ever heard a lie come from his lips when he was insulted he did not answer back with an insult he didn't do evil for evil when he suffered he did not he he did not threaten but he placed his hope in God his joyous expectation of good his excited and joyous expectation of good the righteous judge Christ himself carried our sins in his body to the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. It is this, it is by the, his wounds that we have been healed. You were like sheep that had lost their way, but now you have been brought back to follow the shepherd, keeper of your souls. He said he didn't do evil for evil. He didn't, he didn't you know, when people come and, 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 and uh, or uh, uh, want to insult us or want to say mean spirited things to us and we don't have to justify, we don't have to defend ourselves. The disciple don't defend himself. You don't, have to, you don't have to make excuses for yourself, you don't have to defend yourself. If they, they say what they want to say, you, what you're going to say if they, uh, if they uh, uh, insult you. The word of God says, bless those who persecute you and despite will use you. Bless them. Speak, speak good upon them. Pour good blessings upon them. Speak life upon them. Don't speak death upon, on people. To become a Christian, to let Jesus be your Lord and mediator, the highest manifest, obeying the gospel of Christ. Jesus, God, Jesus told the disciples, he said, okay, I want you to do something. I want you, I want you to go out. I want you to go out and I want you to spread the gospel. I want you to uh, 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 make disciples. He said in Matthew 28, 19, therefore, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he said to them in Mark 15, I mean 16, 15, 16, he said to them, go throughout the world and preach the gospel to all people. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. He told them, he said, I want you to make disciples. I want you to go out in all the world and teach. I want you to teach them about the, about the good news. I teach them about the, uh, uh, the gospel. Teach them about Jesus and make disciples of them. I want, I want to, uh, 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 you pour in everything you know about me teach them so they can reach you can reach this one and they can they can reach one and each one reach one each one reach one keep on going Acts 238 then Peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus to, uh, to uh, for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit Acts 22:16. and what do you intend Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sin, call on the name of the Lord. So he told us, he gave, he gave us a, 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 a command. He told us in Matthew 28, 20, he says, 
teaching them to observe all things, whatever I commanded you, and behold, I am with you all the days until the end of the world. He said, go out and teach them to observe all I've commanded you to do. Oh, teach them. So when you, when you know, I, I uh, uh, before we used to, um, I learned that what I was really doing was discipling people. I didn't even know I was discipling them. I was just, I was just teaching and telling them what I know about Jesus over and over again. And so over the period of time, you have people, you have people uh, that you've been pouring in the Word of God into and instructing the Word of God over and over again in different levels and er uh, different uh, um, people in different areas of your life. And I was so honored uh, about, about a um, lady I've been uh, uh, discipling for about so many years. She's in the position now, she was ordained about a month ago, and now she's uh, picking up her cross and she's going out doing the same thing. Well, she's been doing it, but I'm just seeing how you start doing and the same thing would happen to me. The same thing happened in you in your life. You, you, you're, you're the uh, teachers of the New Testament. You're going to be discipling people. You're going to get all kind of people in your life and from your family. And it's not going to just get them saved. Most of the time that's what happens with people. They get them saved and, they, and, and they leave them. And they don't get no more information. You don't want to get a person that is newborn, a person into the kingdom of God, and don't give them no more further instructions. That's not, that's, that's not, that's, that's not right. You get a person out of the kingdom of darkness and get them in the kingdom of God's dear son and then you, then you abandon a newborn babe. Then you think about that in the natural. That's almost like a, a that's abuse. That's, a, a, that's, ba that's child abuse. <laughs> but we are responsible. We, we have an obligation to go out in all the world and reach people and teach people and, 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 and uh, give them the word of God so they can grow up. Even growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ, Second uh, Peter um, three eighteen, by growing in, in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory in the both now and forever. Amen. So we want to uh, in Acts two forty two. They spent their time in learning from the uh, apostles, taking part in the fellowship and sharing in the fellowship meals and prayer and also the word of God. So we, gotta, we have to take time later on in our life. Sometimes you want to go somewhere or do something and the things you need to do. You just you decide I'm going to do what the Lord tell me to do and the Lord instructed me to do something today. I had set up another plan but I said okay I, I, wait a minute I, I got to do what the Lord instructed me to do. If I have time for the, another plan, I will go for it. But I don't, I won't. But that's the way it is. And you don't do it with a grudging heart. You do it with a heart of joy. Galatians 3.27 For as many were as baptized into Christ, put on, you put on Christ. Galatians 20, uh, 2.20 I have been crucified by Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who live in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God for his righteousness work through the law. Then Christ died for no purpose. So we got to consider the co uh, cost. We got to consider the, uh, the cost of our being a disciple. We got to consider uh, the cost a disciple may seem rather high. One must die, deny himself. One must take up one's cross. One must follow Jesus. Jesus uh, Christ commanded his disciples to re reproduce in others the fullness of life they have found in him. And that's what we're supposed to do. Reproduce in others the fullness of life they found in him. 1 John 15, 8. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit. In this way, you become my disciples. So disciples must bear much fruit. The fruit that remains. You know, you can, we want fruit that, re, that, that will remain. Bear, bear much fruit. So your Father can be glorified when we bear much fruit. James 1.22 He said, But become a doer of the word, and not hear it only deceiving yourself. Do not deceive yourself by just listening to this word, but instead put it into practice. If you listen to the word but do not put it into practice, you are like people who look in a mirror and see themselves as they are. They take a good look at themselves and then go away and at once forget what they look like. 
But if you look closer into the perfect law that set people up free and put on and uh, keep put uh, keep on paying attention to it and do not simply listen and then forget it forget then forget but put it into practice you will be blessed by God and what you do see God don't just want to be a doer of the word but the hearers of the word only just and not doing what we hear anybody can anybody can hear the word and yes what's happening now a lot of people know the word the devil know the word and tremble but God wants us to be a doer of what we hear. So, so if you're going to get this word down your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth going to speak. And it's not going to be like, it's not going to be a grudge. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be a, a job. See, the ministry to me is a, a absolute pleasure. But it wasn't always absolute pleasure. The ministering part was a pleasure. The studying part was, it wasn't always <laughs> a joy. But I'm, if I'm ministering to the people, I need to put something back. That's how can people get burnt out. They ministering to the people. They're all, all, all over the place. Ministering, ministering, ministering. And they're not studying to show their self-approval. Work would be not, uh, not, not a shame and rightly divide the word of truth. They're not pouring that word back into their hearts. They're not getting enough word. And then the disciples, you need to get that word in your heart to the abundance because you need to put it out there. And you can't put out what you don't have. And if you do put it out there, you'll be on e, you be on e, and that's why a lot of times people begin to sink and fall because they don't they spiritually depleted, spiritually poor, they haven't replenished themselves. And if you're a minister of uh, uh, a New Testament uh, uh, ministers, and you're ministering to disciples, and you're going out discipling, you need to put that word in abundance. I mean, you got to pour that word, pour that word, because people eat every day, and sometimes they eat all day, every day. And I'm not pointing fingers right now. Because you know, I've told you about the thumb. But if, you, if you're, you're eating the f a food, you need to eat the spiritual food, especially if you're discipling. Especially if you're putting it out there. Especially if you, because if you, uh, God wants to be able to tell you, look, the Holy Spirit wants to go, I want you to talk to that person. I want you to minister to that person. And when you're ministering, if you don't even open your mouth, if you're on your job and you're walking around all the time and they know who you are, they know what you're all about, they are watching you and sometimes you feel real tired and real weak and begin to feel this. What's going on? Because you are ministering. You are ministering to people even when you're just walking around. So you need to eat that word and get that word in your heart abundantly so, uh, so it, you can be ready for any, any time the Lord tell you to do something. You don't have to go run and get your Bible. You are, the, you are the New Testament. You are the Bible. You, you are the epistle. The word is in you, even in your mouth. The word of faith that you preach. So you are around preaching this word. It's got to come out your mouth. And God wants us to be ready to be fully, fully loaded. Be able to, uh, uh, to minister and when he directs us to minister. Matthew 7, 26, 27. The result of not uh, being a doer of a word. This is the result of not being a doer of a word. Everyone who hears what I say but doesn't obey it, it, uh, it will be like a foolish person who built his house on the sand. Matthew 7, 27. Rain poured and the flood came. Wind blew and struck the house. It collapsed and the result was a total disaster. That's why a lot of times people are going through and everybody is going through something. But people sit down in the middle of the war because they don't, they're not, they don't have, uh, they're not a do of the word. And they sit down in the middle of the war and they wonder why the enemy of who's doing this to them. It's that get up, become a do of the word, and, and walk in your blessing. Temptation and pressure are, the great, are great in the lives of Christians today. But, they have, if, but if they have a deep foundation in the word and have learned to do what God says, they will be able to stand. You'll be able to stand above all things. Stand. Stand, therefore, in the liberty of Christ that set you free. You can stand. I don't care what goes on, what, what, what the enemy try to show you and what the enemy try to put, uh, uh, put, put before you. God's word is absolutely true. So it, it doesn't matter what's going on. He said, don't, the world, don't look at what's going on. Look at me. He said, that's why I love that scripture. That I got my eyes on you. Keep, keep looking unto Jesus, author and finish your faith. You keep your eyes on him. But if you, therefore, if whoever hear these sayings of mine and, do, and does them, I wish, uh, will like him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat it on that house, and it, 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 it fell not. For it was founded on a rock. It was founded on the rock of God's word. 
God's word is steadfast forever settling. God's word won't return to him void, but, but it shall come to the thing is sent. So I, my job and your job is keep on discipling, but fill your, 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 your spirit man. See, you're a spirit that lives in the body and you have a soul. Your spirit man is always willing to be obedient to God. Your flesh is, will never be obedient to God. Your soul has to be renewed. You've got to be transformed by renewing of your mind to get to the point where you let your, your soul and your, and, your, and, your, and your spirit be on the same team. And then you can rule and reign in, in this life. Just praying for your dis disciples won't make them doers of the word. And certainly if you are not a doer, you aren't being a good example. Praying, praying for your disciples won't make them a doer of the word. We're praying for them, we won't make them. But you, we want to be a good example, being a good example before our disciples, when we're discipling people. Be a good example in the fruit of the Spirit. Be a good example in our love walk. Be a good example in our peace. You see, if, if, I, if, I, if they all been, if they all upset and they come and talk to me about being upset or being in uh, fear and I'm, I'm getting more upset and, and more irate or upset than they are, how, how, how can I be an example? I'm not going to be an example of, of, of what is supposed to be like the walk in peace. And you see, that the thing about it, because people, people want to, they want, they, they see, I owe no man nothing but to love them. And I'm going to give you the truth. It's up to the teacher. It's up to teach them the word and teach them to obey it, to be a do doer yourself. The word said, God's word told us to disciple them. He warned us that in uh, John 15, 2. Let's turn to John 15, 2. It says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every one that bear fruit, he prunes it so that it might bring forth more fruit. A mature disciple must teach others, other believers how to live a life pleasing to God and, mu and must equip them to train others to teach others. No person is an end in itself. Every disciple is a part of, of a process, part of God's chosen method for expanding his kingdom through reproduction. That's how he's expanding his kingdom, through reproduction. We're supposed to reproduce others. God, you know, God, uh, God could have brought the whole thing in. He could have had everything already. He had a plan, but he could have had a plan. He said, look, he could have had the radio, the press, or even TV invented before Christ, Christ's birth. And we evangelized everybody on TV, everybody on the radio. But God had a plan for us to reach one. I reach one. I'll reach one, I'll reach two, they two reach four, and that four reach eight, eight reach sixteen, and I mean it's going on. I mean look around, you got a whole multitude of people. And God wants you to be encouraged. We're gonna we're gonna get back to this in part two next uh, next week. But until this time, I want you to uh, um, keep your head up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep living in the light. And let the Lord use you. In Jesus' name. Amen.